And the thing about, about China and authoritarianism is that China is not going to call out Cherokee for human rights abuses. They're like, oh, you want to do human rights abuses? Go for it. We do the same in your country. So, 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 what is, so they are very appealing to the dictators of the Middle East. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Yanmi Park. I'm a North Korean defector human rights activist. Today in this video, I have a very interesting guest. He's my long friend from Iraq. His name is Faisal Armutar. So before we move on, I want to ask you why there has been rise of Chinese I and mean, Communist Party influence in the Middle East. And what's going on? Like what is China doing with the Middle East? Very, thank you, very, very good question. Um, so that is something that is uh, really un uncovered and not much covered by the media, uh, unfortunately, in my opinion, mm -hmm. is and, and something that I actually noticed as of February of this year. And so the moment COVID was like really bubbling up around the world, but also bubbling up in the Middle East, I have seen a viral video of a Chinese person speaking fluent Arabic. So by, by just pure surprise, I'm like, well, that's interesting. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. gonna click on that. And I click on that and it is CGTN Arabic. So it is the official Chinese television in the Arabic version. One million views. I was like, oh, what's going on? So I started watching. And it's saying that the US created coronavirus. <gasps> so it actually came to me by surprise. I wasn't watching this, I wasn't so, Immediately, my instinct is like, what is going on over here? And mm -hmm. I started digging and digging more. To number one, I was like, what is CGTN? And then I go, it's like, CGTN is run by the Chinese Foreign Ministry. Yes. And it has an Arabic facing channel, it has a multiple channel. And it is main interest is to spread pro Chinese propaganda and anti American propaganda. And, and, and so, any conflicts in the Middle East, look at what America is doing in Libya, look at how the bad things America is doing this. Look at America. So like when I started digging more and more, and it is a very organized media propaganda machine. And one of the things that I was far find also interesting is, which I really didn't make the connection when, when it would happen. So we translated a lot of articles about the Uyghur community in, mm -hmm. in Xinjiang or, 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 and, and our page when we did that was bombarded by bots and conspiracy theorists and all of that. This is lies. You are an organization run by the CIA and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, what's going on? What, what the hell is going on? These are people who are like, like Arabs, like who, who, who are, who believe the narrative. And then I was, when, I, when, when I started digging more into the GTN official television. So the, the Chinese official television was also spread this conspiracy theory that this is not real. This is an American-based conspiracy theory that there is any education camps or concentration camps. It's all fake. It doesn't happen. They show, they show like videos of Muslims in China dancing and getting along and singing and stuff like that. And they have made sure that these videos and this content is watched by tens of millions of Arabs feeding an already existing conspiracy theory narrative. Mm -hmm. So they're like, oh, don't believe like when CNN is telling that there's education comes, it's all fake American propaganda. That, that's what you think exists. This mm -hmm. is all lies. This is all, mm -hmm. so, so, it, so, so China is, I mean, this is, and when I, like, this is all recent. So this is like Russia today existed for a while. So that's also the equivalent of CGTN. But CGTN is like very recent. And I mean, MSNBC actually, uh, to their credit and NBC News actually took our report and covered it on the news media in the US. So, so and we were like the only ones talking about it, which is, which is mm -hmm. kind of crazy. And so, so, so add to that, so there's the full media narrative, America sucks, uh, China is a friendly country, we are your friend. So, so, so there's that. And also there is a huge trade deals happening now. Like China is expanding into the Middle East from an economic standpoint. They have uh, signed up a big, uh, uh, I think a 400, either billion or million uh, deal with Iran to build their electricity. Uh, mm -hmm. They are working with Saudi Arabia to build a nuclear program. Uh, so 
they, they are expanding more and more. Uh, in Iraq, there is a lot of oil um, uh, con uh, companies of China from China operating in Iraq. Um, so they are presenting kind of a benign version. We are here to help you. We're your friend. America is, is bad. America harmed you. America, all of that stuff. And we are the replacement. And unfortunately, um, that narrative is selling. Many people right. are already thinking that. And mm -hmm. there is no one to counter that. There's, yeah. So... so Part of the organization, part of what we do when we, when starting from really from February when we did discovery and we figured out this happening, is to actually create counter content to to this nonsense that's being spread, and, and not just only push a pro U.S. agenda, but more like pro, pro, pro fact agenda. Yeah. No, the Uyghur thing, Israel, the mm -hmm. coronavirus is not made by the CIA, um, <laughs> and, and so really just to kind of create a counter narrative that is doesn't exist and really uh, from negative side is fighting the count the misinformation but also from positive side is really promoting facts and promoting freedom and all of our values so so we have launched a counter campaign obviously by i mean we are like 0.001 percent the size of the chinese uh, foreign ministry budget so so we obviously have uh, i mean we have our campaign have reached 30 million people um so we are getting there uh, mm -hmm. However, it's like there's definitely a big fight needs to be done. It is, yet, like I've been on so many um, uh, like le lectures and all that during this period, and many people like still do not think of this concept as like China and Middle East. Like it's still mm -hmm. not resonating. Russia maybe because Russia intervened in Syria during the Syrian civil war, but it, it's still viewed like China and the Middle East are two separate entities. There's no um, and. So this is like something that I think that as any anybody who is worried about the rise of authoritarianism and 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 the thing about about China and authoritarianism is that China is not gonna call out Turkey for human rights abuses. They're like, oh, you want to do human rights abuses? Go for it. We do the same in your country. So 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 what is so they are very appealing to the dictators of the Middle East because because China will be like, okay, you give us money, we give you product. You do, you do you. We're not going to allow you. You want to be authoritarian? We like that too. So we do that in our country. So, so maybe we should do it in your country too. So, and what is, I'm really, really worried about, just to put it on this one, is the Chinese surveillance system mm -hmm. happening in the Middle East. I mean, I, I have read this article on Atlantic on, on what they're doing in Xinjiang and, and in that area, yeah. on the like cameras all around, figuring out people's movements. They... They read their article, they read their, their, their messages. They, so what I'm, I mean, the Middle East has censorship, but it is not the same level of China. And so, so like there's, there's no what's called the Chinese firewall or the, we don't have that yet in the Middle East. However, what I'm worried about is the Chinese technology of surveillance and authoritarianism gets exported to the Middle East. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So, so and, and so that is something definitely will, will make it, very difficult for human rights groups or all that to transfer any knowledge to uh, because you are tracked you are all the time tracked you, you can send a, you can send a text message you can send you cannot send uh, uh, and and then even like things like for example what um, I think is like in China you cannot search Tiananmen Square so like they try to like censor mm -hmm. like if you search Hong Kong protests you cannot do that so imagine like if they do that in Egypt and there's like protests happening in the in the streets, but nobody knows this protest is happening because the Egyptian government is censoring all of the hashtags being used. So so I'm I'm really kind of worried that if that forget about China as a state controlling the Middle East, but really the technology, the surveillance systems, the the values of authoritarianism being okay um, is um, or the one party system being exported into the Middle East because that's that's definitely Get to empower the authoritarians over there. They're going to make it difficult more and more for civil society actors, for human rights defenders to really do something. So that's, that's something that really worries me quite tremendously about, about the kind of the Chinese rising influence um, in the Middle East and, and elsewhere, really.